See how thin we, we can actually go. Oh, I can see the grain coming through now. Let's see how thick that is. It's not 0 0.2, I can tell you that. But, uh, 0 point. Okay, let's go live and do some sharpening at the same time. Let's say hello to everybody. And today I am sharpening these skirt shaves or French edges. So I thought I might as well do a quick video, go live, record it for YouTube, share some info. Hi guys, how are you doing? Wait a couple of minutes uh, for some of you to join. Maybe looking at this uh, stone here, you can figure out what I'm actually doing today. I have some new tools in town. Okay, 47 people already, <laughs> that'll do. <laughs> okay, so I got some tools, I got some new tools. Okay, uh, they are French edges, okay. I got them uh, in three different sizes. So I got 10 millimeter, eight and four. I already have six, so I kind of just wanted to uh, bring some new ones into the fold. Uh, thanks for the speedy reply to my email. You're very welcome, Canton Cobbler. Hello from the Pacific Northwest. How's it going, guys? Hello from Los Angeles, Los Angeles. Goodness me, that's far away. Okay, so um, I'm sharpening some French edges today. Now they're reasonably sharp out the box, okay? So they, they feel reasonably sharp. Um, and to, to a certain extent, they somewhat cut okay. Uh, now I got these off AliExpress. They're, they're not any particular brand. I think they're like D2 steel or something like that. And they have a, quite a nice wooden handle, quite a thick brass ferrule on them. They seem to be actually quite well made. I can't remember what I paid for them, probably 10, 15 pounds, something like that. Um, but sometimes they come with um, milling marks. Now, I'll try and hold it up to the camera so you can see what milling marks are. So I'll hold it up to you guys. That's milling marks. Can you see those little circles? Okay, so there's a bit that goes along there and it gouges out a channel, in this case, 10 millimeters wide. Um, but if, there's, if it's a bit rough, if it's worn, if there's a bit of chatter, um, what you can get are those milling marks. Now, an, any kind of push cut, any where you're pushing forwards, you have to have a completely smooth blade. If you're doing a cut, which is a slicing cut, then you can actually get away with having a little bit of a, a rough edge or even a burred edge, right? For example, on a bread knife, uh, even if it's not razor sharp, you've got all those serrations in them. Uh, so you can actually cut through the bread, but you can't just get a serrated knife and then push through the bread. The bread would just compress, right? Um, so on any kind of push cut where you're pushing it straight through the leather at 90 degrees in the case of these edges, you have to have a perfectly smooth polished edge. You can't have any uh, burrs especially, but it can't have any serrations on it because those teeth aren't going across the leather, they're going straight into the leather and they'll just start to fold. So you have to have that kind of shaving sharp edge. Now I'm doing something different, something I haven't done before. What I've gone ahead and done off camera is I've taken three pieces of leather, okay, for each of the edges. 10 millimeters wide, eight millimeters wide, and four millimeters wide. My six is already sharpened. Uh, and I've put on there uh, some 2,500 grit paper, it's adhesive backed paper, and I've just kind of placed it down on there. And the aim of this, and I've never done this before, uh, not in this fashion, is to kind of get it on the inside and pull through, as well as attack the edge from the outside, which is not as bad. It's the inside, it's the milling marks that I kind of want to just get rid of. Now they're not deep, so I don't need a lot of uh, thickness to them. Thickness to them? I don't need a, a high grit is what I'm saying. I think that's what I'm saying. So what I'm doing now is I'm just getting some marker pen and I'm just going to mark the inside. It just gives me a bit of an indication of um, 
where I'm removing material and where I need to remove material. Actually, I'm going to do the outside at the same time on all of them. And hopefully by the end of this, uh, it should just be a case of uh, regular stropping. And every so often, if necessary, uh, just a touch up on a fine grit stone, a brace of paper. Uh, thanks for being meticulous in your explanation. You're very welcome. Uh, so for you on Instagram, if I turn it up there, you can kind of see I've, I've uh, marked the, uh, the edge. Can you see that? With some black marker at the top there and on the other side as well. So I've got some black marker. So hopefully you guys can see that. It's just a marker on either end. Uh, I'm not using any water on these. I'm just gonna pull them through. Just gonna pull them through. And you've got a little bit of a shovel effect. Can you see that? It's, it kind of scoops inwards very slightly. So when I put my abrasive paper on the leather in, I'm actually kind of pushing it inside that little scoop, okay? That way I can maintain the angle set at the factory. So all I'm gonna do now is just pull that through like so. So I'm attacking the inside right now with 2,500 grit. So I'm just gonna do this a few times and then just assess whether or not it's removing enough material. And it is actually, it needs a few more swipes. You can definitely see right on the edge, those milling marks have started to, to disappear. Again, they're very shallow. If they were deep milling marks, I'd probably have to start with uh, like 600 grit or something like that. And I might even use a, a powered device of some kind on a low speed setting to avoid heat buildup. And just pulling that through a few more times. And you can see there on the inside, I've worn away that marker pen. So I can see where it's come off and where it hasn't come off. And if there's any milling marks that got marker in it, it would show up because it would be below the surface. So that's okay. All right. So the outside looks pretty good. So I'm going to again start on uh, 2,500 grit. This time it's on um, the stone. Follow me. Why? Give me a reason. So just starting at one angle, so a little bit higher up. Just kind of back and forth a little bit more again. Moving it around. Good, paper towel. Yeah, if you guys do have any questions, just uh, get them down, uh, but copy them before you send them. That way you could uh, send it again if necessary. If I miss your question, apologies if that's the case. So I'm just gonna do a couple more on the inside there. Now this is just 2,500 grit, uh, no polishing whatsoever. Oh, wow, yeah, not bad, considering there's no polishing. Okay, so I'm gonna put that to the side and I'm gonna keep that there. Eight millimeters, eight millimeters. So eight mil is the next one. So again, I've got another piece of leather with 2,500 grit on there. Again, very, very shallow milling marks, but those milling marks, even if I was to polish the outside, those milling marks would cause serrations because the surface above it isn't perfect. So let's try that, it's a tight one. Should ease up. And I'm keeping that angle low, I'm not pulling at a, a steep angle. I wanna keep that angle shallow. That's what we need for that really smooth, easy cut. 
It's like a similar angle to a skiving knife, really. Very shallow. Good evening from Holland. Hello from India. Hi guys, thank you for joining me. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I am cleaning up some French edges or edge shaves, depending on where in the world you're from. Because they're a little, they're sharp, but they're a little rough. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so outside, so this is the eight millimeter now. So at one angle, test, come up a little bit higher. Interesting, so this, this isn't flat, this isn't level, and this is one of the reasons why I've, I've never bought a knife or something that I didn't finish off myself, because these kind of things you, you only find out when you do it yourself. You can see that in the center there. Okay, it's not a sharp focus, but you can kind of see it. You can see on the sides where it's wearing away. I mean, in the center it's not. Okay, you can still see that marker pen in the center. And that's because there's a, it's very slightly warped, okay? Or it's more like this. So the sides are hitting, but the center is not. Might only be very shallow. If you guys can see that on camera there. But it needs to be worn down. So we'll see if we can get it done on 2,500 grit, which isn't really good at material removal. Oh no, it's done it. <laughs> All right, so you can see there now, it's now gonna be a straight cut, okay? Because these are very, very thin, like 0.2 millimeter thick piece sheets of abrasive paper uh, down on a very flat polished piece of granite. So when we uh, index it to this, we get a very nice straight edge. Unrelated question, when stitching, do the distances of stitching holes make a difference on how tightly the leather stay together? Um, I'm trying to formulate an answer to that. Practically, if, you, if you've got a larger stitch spacing, it's gonna allow you to use thicker thread. Uh, and you've got more leather between each stitch. So as long as you've got stronger thread and you've got more leather between each stitch, it can technically be stronger. For example, if you look at um, you know, uh, vintage cases and luggage and things like that, any parts that are hand stitched, trunks, trunk handles, for example, um, you're gonna find that it's, it's a larger stitch because it's designed for longevity in that sense. So yeah, uh, smaller, finer stitches aren't as durable as larger stitches with thicker thread. Large stitches with thin thread, however, is not a good combination. So I'm just doing the inside on there. Right, let's give it a little quick test. It's taken off any burr there. Where did I put my, my testy leather? Might be a little bit of a burr on there. So I'm just gonna push forward a few times. I'm actually gonna do this one in. No, I'm not. Okay, very slight burr on that one that we've picked up. That might need a little bit more work. No, maybe not. Oh, it looks like the burrs just literally just come off. Okay, so it's just gonna need polishing. Okay, so already we're on to size number four, our third. And this one is, uh, hasn't been made that greatly. If you guys can see that on camera, there's a bit of a, an angle to the blade. That's not a bad thing when the blade is angled. You can actually buy them with a, like a 45 degree angle. It does make the cut a little smoother. Um, not a bad thing, just an observation, really. Maybe you guys can see that. Just a very slight angle on there. All right, so let's go on the inside first of all. 
Uh, hi there, you only use oiled stone or do you also use polishing paste on a leather strop? Yeah, so that's my uh, leather strop with uh, green polishing compound. Uh, I'll be finishing off with that. So I'm just pulling through on the four millimeter now. See how that goes. Make it nice and low on here actually. So I can get a bit more pressure. So on the edge of the paring stone, pressing down, I'm just gonna pull through. Cause I'm not able to get enough pressure to get those milling marks out. And I haven't made these with a, a lower grip. <laughs> so just off the edge. That's better. A couple more of those, I think. It's a good bit of down pressure. Nice. Okay, so let's polish that on the outside. So we've done the inside now. How do you flatten a sharpening stone? Uh, you buy a diamond hone. <laughs> I don't. I've. Uh, I've, I've got so many different sharpening stones that I've just kind of given up on them. Um, it's a bit of a, some people love that kind of thing. I'm, I'm not a big fan of it and having to keep leveling it. I use diamond hones, which is a, a piece of steel with diamonds on the top, uh, plated on with nickel or something like that. Um, but lately I've got Hermes uh, abrasive paper similar to the scary sharp system, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. And it, it's uh, sticky on one side, so you just stick it down. And I've probably sharpened on here so far about four or five times, and they're still good to go. Uh, and I've got two and a half meters on each roll, and they're about eight pounds each. So, you know, and then when they're done, you just peel it off and put another piece down. And it's just a flat piece of granite. And it's just so simple, um, it really does, Kind of, my stones stay in the drawer now. I don't use them anymore. It's up to you, horses for courses. Some people love stones, especially the uh, traditional aspect of it. I get that. But I just love the speed of doing this. And the benefit, of course, over diamond plates is uh, you can just put water down. You don't have to worry about rusting, which I have seen before. I think you can use window cleaner for that as well. Tiny, tiny burr on there. Let's get rid of that. There it is. Uh, you're very welcome. Yeah, some people absolutely love sharpening stones and they get really expensive, like Belgian cuticle stones and all that kind of thing. <laughs> especially the shaving community. I go through phases of uh, wet shaving, no, not wet shaving, uh, shaving with a straight razor. So I do go on the uh, straight razor forum sometimes and the amount of money people are spending hundreds, hundreds on a natural stone that takes so much care to look after and <laughs> you really gotta kind of love it. more light pushes light pushes can you tell me the difference between chevre and remler never heard of remler and chevre is a uh, goat skin oh that's a terrible burr on there yeah that's got a big old burr Yeah, which just came off, that's good. Okay, right, so where are we? Okay, so we've finished off these edges now, so we've removed a lot of these little micro milling marks, which causes an issue. If you're pushing it through leather, it just doesn't cut as cleanly, especially if you're trying to use these on softer leathers. 
like goat skin, chevre, uh, then you can have a little bit of an issue. It just it doesn't have that gliding action which you really want. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. Uh, and what am I going to need? I'm going to need this. Let me just give that. And what else am I going to need? I still have this. This is just another piece of leather um, with some green compound on the flesh side. Okay, so I can actually see that they've obviously polished this on a machine. As you can see, it's quite mirror polished. And where I've gone on 2500 grit at the top there, you can see it's very slightly matte finish. Okay, it's not rough, it's just a matte finish, like a satin finish, really. Um, so I can see where I'm polishing with this compound because that satin should very quickly go into a high gloss and then you know that edge is, whoa, that edge got hot real quick. Wow. Um, hi, I'm from Venezuela. Uh, have you bought tools at Rocky Mountain Leather Supply? Thank you for your help and your contribution to the world. I've never bought tools from Rocky Mountain Leather, but I've got a lot of tools from Rocky Mountain Leather. They, they send uh, tools to me for reviews. Uh, for example, the Rocky Mountain Leather Summit uh, creasing machine, uh, various skiving knives. Uh, it sent me quite a bit over the, over the last couple of years, I'm trying to think of what it is. Like loads of small things. I probably reviewed a lot of them. Some I've reviewed, some I haven't. If I like it, I'll review it. If I don't, I don't. Uh, but yeah, they are... I know, I know the guy who runs it. Uh, I've spoken to him quite a few times and his assistants and staff there and stuff like that. And they seem very nice people. I hear good things. All right, so just seeing where the edge is. I'm starting to get that polish on there now. And what I'm doing is as I'm pulling it along, I'm actually lifting it up very slightly. So I'm starting back from the blade and bringing it up to the blade giving a nice polish all the way along. I have difficulties with the angle of my French skiver. Can't really make it work, but it's a palasanto. When you say French skiver, do you mean French edger or you actually mean a skiving knife from France? Just so that I'm clear on what you mean. Tellier 56 says, peace my friend, hope all is well. It is very well, thank you very much. Doing good. Okay, so that's getting a nice polish on the outside there. It doesn't have to be a, like a demon polish because of course, as you're using it and you're constantly, oh my goodness, as you're using it and, po and constantly polishing it, uh, it'll get shinier and shinier and shinier. Now this is a six millimeter wide strip of leather and we are inside a 10 millimeter uh, French edger here. So what I'm actually doing is I'm actually snaking it from one side to the other going across like that, um, which I'll do also for the, uh, for the eight millimeter, but the four millimeter I'm gonna have a, uh, to make its own version maybe afterwards if necessary. Once you polish the inside, you don't really need to touch it up ever again. You just constantly polish it from the outside. Uh, French Asia. Are these from Wuta? They are not from Wuta. Okay, so um, you're asking what you're saying that you have difficulties with the angle of your French edger. And when you're saying you're having difficulties with the angle, can you just explain what's difficult about the angle? For example, you're having difficulty sharpening it to the correct angle because it's at the wrong angle 
Just a little bit more information, that way I can give you a, a proper answer. Okay, all right, so, little test. That's naughty. Oh my goodness. A soft bit of belly section on there. Oh, that's sexy. <laughs> I'm pleased with that, holy crap. I can't find the correct angle to cut. Okay, so, uh, are you asking me you can't find the correct angle to sharpen it in order to cut properly, or you're having trouble finding the angle with your hand as you're cutting through the leather? So there's a, we're narrowing it down slowly, bit by bit. Is it the sharpening angle or is it the usage angle? Okay, so we're now moving on to the eight millimeter, and this was the one that had that kind of like uh, that dip or the, in the center, that arc rather, it was kind of missing from the top. Can't find the correct angle to cut. Um, you know, much like if you drive a car with, a, with a, a manual gearbox, you're looking for that biting point, right? Constantly that little biting point where you know it's engaged. Uh, it's the same with, with leather. The, the way to find the correct angle is to practice with different angles. So you start high and bring it down a little bit lower and a little bit lower and just kind of go along a piece of leather and just practice with it and then cut that edge off with a ruler and a knife and then do the next one uh, and just, just feel for it. And you know, you can use an anchor point on your, on your hand. So if you keep this in the palm the entire time, and your index finger is on the end, for example, and you put it down, uh, you know, I might find the correct angle and it's where my ring finger touches the work surface. And I know that's the correct angle and I move from there, okay? Or it might be until, you know, the knuckle of my middle finger touches and I move on from there. So kind of when you find the correct angle, find your little anchor point, the way you hold it every single time. It's like all usage or skiving knife usage. Uh, or even in, in archery, you're always finding that anchor point that's the same every single time. Uh, and if you can't find that point where it bites into the leather properly, uh, then it's not sharp enough. It's a, a simple answer to that. The angle to hold on the leather when I would thin the leather, yeah. Change the angle until you find the correct one. And if you don't find the correct one, it needs sharpening. So we're just polishing the outside first of all. That's shining up quite nicely. It's a good thing about having a, a long strop. This thing is what, something like two foot long. There is a video on how to make this, by the way. It's on my YouTube channel. And it's heat treatment. But I mean, uh, who uses D2 now? like the most expensive leathercraft brand there is. Uh, Korean company. Uh, they won an award for design or something like that. They use D-Tool literally for everything. They're skiving knives, round knives, awls. I can't remember the name. Doldoki, there you go. Doldoki is another user of D2. I don't know if this is D2, no idea. It's either D2 or high speed steel or something like that. Which could be a lie, who knows. Yeah, but there's, there's, always, a, there's always something that doesn't work in theory and then in practice it, it just does. <laughs> and some should work in theory and in practice doesn't. <laughs> What's up, Phil? How's it going? Okay, so almost done on this four. Hopefully that was, that was enough. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a polish on the inside. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oof. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so let's, let's bring you guys in. Let's bring you guys in and we'll just play around with some bits of leather. Let's 
play around, get some toys. Okay. One of the best investments for your workspace is just a simple wallpaper brush. You know, the one that you brush wallpaper on with? You just get rid of all the stuff all over your desk, all onto the floor, and you can vacuum it later. All right, uh, I'm gonna go around the back, bring these cameras closer up to the paring stone. All right. So I am recording this uh, for YouTube, guys. So if you wanna watch this in uh, HD afterwards, feel free. Okay, so that is focused there, that's okay. All right, so let's get some toys. We have some toys here. Uh, first up, let's try some, this is some split English bridal leather. Do you use the sewing machines? I do not use the sewing machines, no. Okay. So, very smooth. I'm not doing any particular technique here. I'm just kind of like pushing it through the leather. So that polish really made a difference. Uh, this is about one millimeters, 0.81 millimeters. So as you can see, it's, it cuts through very quickly. Try to go a bit shallower. Yeah, that's nice. A little bit shallower. Sometimes to get that shallow cut, you just bring it right back, but put, use more down pressure. And it takes off a smaller amount. So as you can see, very sharp. Okay. Uh, let's try some thicker veg tan. And I'm always, always a few stripe swipes every time I go to, I don't care what steel it is. I'm always just polishing a few swipes every single time. Yeah, so that's nice. Let's get a really nice steep angle on there, like a 45 degree cut. No, that went awry, but is that 45 degree cut? Let's find out. Yeah, pretty much. Not too bad. 45 degree cut on a piece of two mil. Let's try, so this is the eight millimeter that we sharpened. Whoop. That cuts at a slightly different angle, I think. Yeah, that's fun. So this is veg tan, this is veg tan calf. So, you know, quite easy. It's a little bit more rough. That's what happens when you're looking at the camera and doing this at the same time, you slip off. So let's try this. This is just some off cut flank that we were talking about earlier, quite stretchy. This is where it really mows the lawn. Look at that. Look at that. That's nice. I'll tell you what, guys, it's not doing this because of any particular brand or special steel or anything like that. It's just technique, technique of sharpening. That's what does it. It's not like if you rush out and get the same one, you're gonna get the same results. It always comes down to technique. And you literally saw me from start to finish and these things roughly cut before, but they were leaving some tremendous marks and it was using a lot of force. So they weren't ready to go. But the problem is a lot of people would think that, that that's how it should be, which is not, it should glide through leather. Uh, let's try 10. There's quite a lot of loose grain on the edge here. Yeah, it just makes no problem. Taking those bits off. Really like that. It's, it's therapeutic. Any of you know what ASMR is? <laughs> it's, it's like the, the sound, the feeling. Love it. All right, let's try this four. This was uh, the one that gave us a little bit of a problem because it's got 
tiny angle to the blade. Ooh, delicious. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, really good cornering abilities, very nimble. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's nice and sharp. So you got nice, uh, whatever you would use that for in leather craft. <laughs> Cuts beautifully. Let's try it on uh, some firmer leather here. If we keep the guide in line with the edge, we can get a nice accurate cut. The only thing I, I do uh, wish I'd see more often, you don't really see very often, some mess out of the way, is uh, a French edger or an edge shave, if you're from the United Kingdom, should never have such a, a steep drop off on the, uh, on the ferrule there because the leather invariably hits that and then has the buckle somewhere else, okay? So like constantly hitting that, it should really be tapered like a, like a fine ore like that, the uh, Jerome David titanium ore. If it had a ferrule on there that was like that, that would, that would be uh, much better. I'll tell you who does that, Palosanto factory, uh, but obviously you're paying the difference. So I might just put a piece of uh, thick leather on there and just chamfer the edges just for the long cuts where it just comes up and you've got to kind of like move it out the way with your finger so it doesn't, you know, hit and that kind of thing. This is, uh, this is entertaining to say the least. Oh, it just missed it there. That wasn't so bad. Let's go through the center. Edge is not doing too badly. Needs a touch, I think. Couple swipes. Yeah, it makes a bit of a difference. So there you go. So that is uh, how I finish off the edges of these edges, okay? And it was a bit of an experiment because I've never done it before. Uh, let me just get them back so you guys can see. Uh, what I use, a little bit more of a close-up. So I just put some uh, fine, fine grit, 2,500 grit, by a company called Hermes, not Hermes, Hermes, uh, so that I could kind of smooth out the inside edge just by pulling it through, um, and then just doing the outside edge. Oh, that's demonic, that's so sharp. Uh, and that way I could attack both the inside and the outside. So if you if you have an edger that has any roughness to the inside, doesn't matter how much polished you get the outside, it's never gonna give you that beautiful, beautiful uh, fine edge and fine cut. Uh, so I'm saying skive the entire piece to 0.2 millimeters. Uh, <laughs> that, would be, uh, that would be something, wouldn't it? I'd probably just put it through a machine, not that you would use two 0.2 millimeters of leather. Cool. Any other questions, guys? Anything you want to know uh, before I go? There's another piece of goat there. Yeah, they can get really thin. See how thin we, we can actually go. Oh, I can see the grain coming through now. Let's see how thick that is. It's not 0 0.2, I can tell you that. But, uh, 0 0.5. I wouldn't necessarily do an entire piece like this. Like if I was gonna wrap a box or something or wrap a handle. I mean, you could, but I would definitely use my skiver machine for that. It'll give you a bit more consistency. But if you wanted to do it by hand, you could. Just going around and finding those high spots. 
I always wondered if grit is the same in countries uh, or like inch and centimeters. As far as I know, grit is grit and inch is an inch and a centimeter is a centimeter. Uh, they're particles and the size is based on microns, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if microns are metric or imperial. Do you know what I didn't do? I didn't sharpen them on this. And this is a canvas piece that's been impregnated with a compound that's a lot finer than uh, the green compound. I love canvas for this. It's surprisingly durable the amount that I use it. And this will get really, just adds another 5% to that edge. Uh, how can I watch the Strop video if I was a member prior to the debut? Thanks for the sharpening techniques. Uh, I believe your, the email box for this, when you put your email in there, it's, it's not, uh, it's, it gives you a different trigger. So it's triggered to send you the, uh, the video, the full video. Because I have a, a couple of different email boxes on the website. One of them will send you the free uh, tool buyer's guide and the uh, leather buyer's guide uh, and one of them will send you the strop video yeah and make, yeah you can feel a very slight increase in uh, in sharpness on there let's try that on here it's starting to look like a crop circle it made more of a difference on the four I think splitter or skyver uh, are you asking what the difference between a, a splitting machine and a skiver is? Depends what you mean by skiver, because you've got a skiving knife, bell knife skiver, uh, sheepskin skiver, which is a type of leather. All right, guys, well, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Uh, I certainly did, because I tried a technique that I haven't tried before. In my mind, it worked, so I thought I'd give it a go. If it didn't work, it didn't work, but uh, as it turned out, it did work, and it worked rather well. So. Uh, it certainly beats the, uh, the sharpening method where you have something that's flat and then you pull back on the inside of your French edger and that puts too much of a steep angle on it. To keep that shallow angle you need something that gets inside in between the guides so you can polish that interior. And it only needs to be done once. Once you've polished that interior it only needs to be done once. And if you sharpen it again you can just sharpen it from the outside and when you, you know, need to touch it up on the strop you just touch it up from the outside. You don't need to carry on doing the inside. If you build up a burr or something like that, then just a piece of leather with some compound on it on the inside occasionally, but that's, you know, an exception. Uh, what machine would I use to scribe the whole piece? Uh, I wouldn't, I would use, uh, well, you need a band knife splitter for that. Uh, I would buy it from the tannery or the supplier. Uh, already split to that thickness or I'd purchased the thickness that I needed for that particular project. Uh, and if I needed to split certain pieces, small pieces, for example, slots on a wallet, let's just say for argument's sake, then I would use uh, the bell knife skiving machine. Um, if I needed something that was gonna be for a bag and they didn't offer what I wanted in the color and the thickness in that type of leather, then I would have it split uh, professionally for me. Um, I, I don't have a band knife splitter. I've thought about doing it, but I, I get by pretty good by ordering the thicknesses that I need for the projects that I want to work on or having it split. Uh, and it's becoming more and more common now that companies like Rocky Mountain Leather Supply buy leather online in Italy. Um, you can actually specify what thickness you want it and they'll perform that service for free. Uh, which is pretty good because it's taking a huge risk. If they mess it up, then, <laughs> then that's their piece of leather, right? And they've got to do it again for you. But uh, it's becoming more and more popular now that suppliers actually uh, have the facility to split, which I think is smart because it really sets them apart against other suppliers. If you can have it custom split, uh, especially, you know, one single piece. Some companies you have to do a, a large bulk order of like 100 meet, square meters worth before they'll start splitting and all that kind of thing. Um, but there are some companies out there that will split skin by skin, which is uh, really cool.
Absolutely, thank you. You're very welcome. So thanks for watching this, guys. Um, if you do have any questions, you can always DM me. And don't forget, you've got the free tool buyers guide and the leather selection guide on the website, leathercraftmasterclass.com. Uh, link in bio, don't forget. Okay, so someone writes in English now. <laughs> Hello from Venezuela. Can I make the sharpening board by hand? What matter does it take each extreme? In my country, I cannot obtain it and I would like to know if I can make it at home. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Send me a, a direct message and I will steer you in the correct direction. I think it would be easier to do it that way. But thank you for joining me, guys, and I will hopefully see you next time on another impromptu live. And if you ever miss these lives or you've come in at the last second, don't forget to turn on your notifications on Instagram. So if I go live, if a new post comes up or new story, you will be the first to know and you won't miss out. But in the meantime, thanks a lot, guys, and I will see you next time.